Hey there! Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to work with SWD, Serial Wire Debug Protocol. This protocol is available only on ARM architectures and it allows us to know what the microcontroller is currently doing by sending the log messages from the board to our host. So let's begin. In the previous videos, I said that turning on the LED is a hello world equivalent in the embedded world. But what if we want the microcontroller to print something out? Do we have to communicate with the external world using LEDs and Morse code? Absolutely not. There is a possibility to set up a communication between our development board and the host using semi-hosting. Semi-hosting is a mechanism that lets embedded devices, in essence our board, do I.O. communication with the host, in essence our laptop. This sort of communication is mainly used for logging messages from the board to the host. Having the print debugger available through the ST-Link, it means we have all the necessary connections already set up which is a great advantage of the Nucleo and Discovery boards, especially when we are learning how to use protocols and we are not that savvy with electronics. Reading schematics is a great skill to have, building your own board is the next level, and I won't be focusing on it for now. So let's get back to the main point. How can we ask the microcontroller to print out something on our screen? The Discovery Book proposes to use ITM Instrumentation Trace Macrocell. We briefly discussed this protocol in one of the previous videos about HAL crates, but we are not going to be using ITM today, but Serial Wire Debug Protocol. So let's quickly walk through how to set up the entire Cargo. We just did cargo init and we have a clean repository with main.rs and cargo toml file. So let's start with cargo toml. The three dependencies we are going to be relying on during this exercise. It's Cortex MRT, semi-hosting and panic hold. So let's hop into the main function. This classic part of making any Rust code is to make sure that we have no main and no STD. Next, we are going to create our main function that has the hash entry point, where we are going to have an infinite busy loop, as well as our hello world print. To make this work, we need to make sure we have correct imports in place and we are going to use panic hold, cortex, MRT and semi-hosting as per the dependencies. The last bit is to configure the target so we can do cargo build dash dash target. And in our case, as per video last week about cross compilation, it's stamp v7 em. We are waiting for the Rust Analyzer and Cargo Clippy to unlock the directory. I will fast forward the video. Cool, seems like it's working. So let's give it a try now and let's try Cargo Run. All right, then save the file. I believe I did it now. And let's try Cargo Run. And we do not have memory.x file. So also in the top directory, we have to create a memory.x file. And this is a linker script. And in our case, we know which microcontroller we have. And it looks as follows. Given that file, we can try to cargo run now. And we see that it worked, seems like. So let's quit. Let's open the uh, connection to our board. My board is connected right now to the USB port. And let's try to cargo run. OK, let's do target extended remote 333 because this is the port we are listening for GDB connections. 
looks good. Uh, let's try to load. It looks like it correctly loaded the code. Okay, so let me now press the reset button on the board, or maybe I will type continue. And we have an issue. Program receive a seek trap. So the problem is that SWD serial wire debug does not work by default. We need to execute a command called monitor arm semi hosting enable. Now semi hosting is enabled. Let's try to continue. And we see on the right hello world. So what if it ha what happens if I press the reset button? We see the hello world again and again and again. And it absolutely makes sense because in our main.rs, in our main function, we print hello world once and then we go into a busy loop. Uh, each press of the reset button is going to put us again from the start in hash entry function. What we can do to make our lives a little bit more automated is to create this open OCD file that I've mentioned in the executing runner. So how to do this is I'm going to create a new file and I call it open OCD GDB. And what this file does, it executes the command before um, entering and allowing us to put those GDP commands. So we're going to say we would like to have the target extended remote and we would like to enable semi-hosting. And maybe the last one, we would like to load the config and why not continue? So I say this file and let's see if clear here and let's see if it works. Seems like semi-hosting is enabled. We loaded the code and here we are. The hello world has printed. Oh, let's close this. As we see, hello world has printed correctly. And that would be all for today's lab. That would be all for today. If you enjoyed today's material, please don't forget to press the like button, leave the comment down in the comment section and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for making me a part of your day and I hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye.